Hey everybody, Will here. That was the sound of an old rickety elevator I recorded, then mapped to the continuum fingerboard, and then rode in real time as it was indexed by my fingers sliding across the continuum. Sounds a little crazy. Let's check it out. It all starts here with this sound, the sample cloud. Go ahead and do Command B and type in sample cloud. Once you find it in your prototypes, double click. And you'll get this. I'm using my Armenian elevator sample, like I said, but for now, phrase will do just fine. And then as you'll see, we can put any sample in there we want. I've changed my grain envelope to be rectangular smoothed because this Gaussian uh, is just a little bit too smooth. This is the shape of the Gaussian envelope. Inside your Kima 7 folder, there is a folder called Waves and then Windows, which is what this is over here. I've just opened it in the sound browser so that I can drag and drop and hear the changes quicker. So if I highlight there and then drag this in, it will just replace it. And this parameter field is huge in terms of the overall sound. So I'd encourage you to experiment a bit with these different uh, grain envelope shapes. For the sound I wanted, I arrived at rectangular smooth. All right, so I'll go ahead and close this out. Amplitude is being controlled by this attack release. So if you command B, type in AR. When it's highlighted like this, you can just press command C and then highlight the field and command V, then either hit accept or double click in the background of the sound file here so that you can see it up here. And then we go in there and all this is actually the default. So it's gonna be gated by a key down, which is a finger on the continuum or MIDI keyboard. Totally welcome to do that. Back in here, frequency, I'm leaving a default. So this is gonna play back at the speed at which it was recorded. Frequency jitter. This is deviation from the rate of playback. So I've mapped this to key velocity. This means that the harder I press the key, the more deviation we're gonna have, frequency jitter we're gonna have. I've scaled it by one half so that the largest value it can be is one half so that it doesn't get too insane. But obviously play around with this. This is all uh, up to your ears and in, in the design you want. Time index, this is a key field here for getting the sample mapped to the entirety of the keyboard. So the time index is looking for negative one to one values, all right? Key number is a MIDI note number which has a range from zero note number to 127. So obviously that is nowhere near negative one to one. So we need to do two things here. First, my continuum is not going from zero to 127. So I need to scale that range. And then we need to scale that to zero to one. And then we're gonna put it into negative one to one. So let's break this whole thing down. First thing I'm gonna do so I can see what my continuum is sending is go up here to DSP, configure MIDI and then I'm gonna show MIDI messages. This is my event log. And then if I press on the most bottom note, there's a lot of things happening here, but you can see that there is a 39 in there. Okay, so that's note number 39, the bottom most note I'm gonna play on my continuum. Now I'll go to the top most and we'll see I could go potentially all the way to 85, but the last full one is 84. So I'm going from MIDI note number 39 to MIDI note number 84. So let's go back here, and it's no coincidence then 
that these numbers are in there. So what this is saying is take the key number, subtract 39. So when it's key number 39, that's zero. So then this we already know doesn't matter because it's going to be zero. All right, so now that's our minimum. And then our maximum we said was going to be MIDI note number 84. So when this key number is 84 minus 39 divided by 84 minus 39, we know that that is 1. So now we're in the range of 0 to 1 on this continuum fingerboard. That's great, but like I said, time index is looking for values from negative 1 to 1. If I left this at 0 to 1, we would only hear the second half of the sample because negative 1 in the time index is always the very beginning of the sample. 0 is the dead center of the sample and 1 is the very end of the sample regardless of the length. So in order to put this so that I can get the whole sample indexed by my fingers on this keyboard, I need to multiply by 2 to put it in the range of 0 to 2 and then subtract by 1 to offset the whole thing and shift it down. So now I'm in the range of negative 1 to 1 with my fingers on this keyboard. You can, if your note numbers are the same, just put those same values in, but that's why you want to look at your MIDI messages up here to see what it's sending. A better way to think about this without these constant values is key number minus the minimum divided by the maximum minus the minimum. So that's another way of, uh, of thinking about this if your numbers don't line up to what I have here. Time index jitter is going to be random deviation from that point that we've indexed into the sample. Pretty interesting parameter field. Um, what this means is that I could potentially have my finger anywhere but hear sounds of the sample from anywhere in the length of the sample. I've chosen to put a constant here of 0.01, um, but again, definitely experiment with this because this has a big factor on the sound. The density is how dense of a texture we're going to create, how many new grains can spawn at any particular time, and I've mapped that to key velocity. So the harder I press down on the fingerboard, the more dense the texture, the more grains that can occur at one time or that will happen at one time. Less means less dense. Grain duration is the length of the grain up to one second. I've mapped that to key timbre. So on the continuum, timbre goes from the front to the back or the y-axis. So short values here will be as my fingers closer to the bottom and longer times up to a second will be towards the top. If you don't have a continuum, that's okay. Key timbre is just going to show up as a fader in your VCS and you can either move it with a MIDI fader or knob or you could put another uh, value in here like for example you could even put key velocity in here so that the harder you press the longer the grain duration. Grain duration jitter, sticking with this jitter theme, is going to be deviation from that grain duration length, and I've set that to be 1 minus key timbre. So the further up my finger is on the continuum fingerboard, we know the longer the grain duration, and then that means I've got a large value for key timbre, so this would be essentially 1 minus 1, which would be 0, so no jitter. So the further up, the longer the grain duration with no jitter, the further back or lower my finger is, the shorter the grain duration with a lot of jitter. So it can be any length essentially, up to twice the length here that's specified in the grain duration. Pan, 0.5 means dead center, 0 is hard left, 1 is hard right, so every grain is going to come from the middle except for that in pan jitter I too have mapped that to key velocity, so 1 minus key velocity. The harder I press this means the jitter is going to start to go away. So really light values for velocity are going to mean that grains can come essentially from anywhere in the stereophonic field. So by having all these parameters mapped to the continuum, 
the most subtle movements with different fingers are going to allow for a lot of different spatiality uh, effects as well as uh, grain duration and all these fields up here and indexing into the sample and we're going to hear all this again in just a moment. Max grains 28 up to 28 uh, grains simultaneously and then seed this is default a starting point for the random number generator. Lastly if you have any parameter other than zero in your freak jitter or if you're doing some arithmetic on the frequency parameter field you have to set your interpolation to linear otherwise no changes will happen there. Okay so now the final step here to get it so that it's polyphonic is to get a MIDI voice. So command B, MIDI voice, MIDI voice for keyboard polyphony. That sounds promising. Take that from your prototype strip and just drag it right onto the line as I have here. And then all I've done is just made it so that I can have up to 10 voices. If you don't want that many, just put a few less there. Obviously, it takes a bit more processing power to do so, but um, I can handle it here. So now we're ready to play with this sound a bit more. And let's just hear uh, some of these things, dissect this a bit so that it becomes a bit more clear um, what's going on, starting with the frequency jitter. So the harder I press down on the key, the more variance we should hear in the frequency. So let's see if I can find that. And it's there, but because there's so many other parameter fields that are also linked to that, it can be somewhat hard to decipher, so you just have to sit and tweak. I arrived at that because I tweaked this for a, a long time. Um, density, we could hear that too. The harder I push down, the more dense the texture. So this is really lightly. Harder. grain duration, the length of each grain, remember that's on the y-axis here, so we should have a longer grain at the top. Shorter grain towards the bottom. And then in between. that's happening. I'm going to change this back. I believe I had it at one, one minus key timbre. So let's hear that now. Okay, let's hear it with the grain duration jitter. So short grain duration to start, but then because there's so much jitter, it can be any length. Cool, let's check out pan and pan jitter. So again, the harder I press, the less pan jitter. So the more monophonic or centered the grains will be. So really lightly, we should hear a lot of scattering. Easier to hear on headphones. Get a nice part of the sample. And that's what's happening there too. So remember these are fields and parameters that I've just decided to play with. Obviously you can put in other hot values. You could put in key velocity in your pan or you could put in 
anything else there or just make it, like I said, a, a continuous controller from your MIDI uh, keyboard by highlighting the parameter field, pressing escape, and then moving a MIDI fader. It will automatically put that value in there and then you can control that from the VCS or via these faders uh, that come up um, once you have it there. So really cool way to get started uh, with some sound design with a sample. I'm using this from my personal library, but a really nice one if you need something to get started with other than the phrase, which is the default, is bell. And then let's just check this out. This, this sample is much shorter than the one I was using. It's only 3.66 seconds. So we're going to have a lot more uh, subtleties potentially here to find as each key is taking up more of that sample duration. It's also much more tonal than the other one, so easier to hear the frequency jitter. Pretty nuts. If I don't want that, I can just go to none. Rectangular smooth might be a little too abrasive, so I might put in something a little smoother, hamming. Let's try that out. You get the idea. Experiment with the sample, short, long, otherwise rhythmic, anything. The more dense and stuff it is, the more you'll kind of have to work with and explore in the nuances and explore the grain envelope and have some fun with this. I uh, welcome your thoughts and comments in the section below. And in case you're curious, this is the elevator I recorded. I stuck my head through an opening in the fence around it and took this picture here while the elevator was on its way up. So thank God I made it out of there. Uh, otherwise, we might not have had this, uh, this tutorial video. So hope you enjoy this, and thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're into this kind of thing, and we'll see you in the next video.